So now we will going to be creating the button. So we will create the button by using the button class, which is a built-in class in Java FX. Let's call this an exit button. And we can put the text on the button right through the constructor. Organize your imports. Make sure you do not choose AWT package. So that declares a button object which will have the exit text. I will add the button to the group. Oh, I just added it to the graph and graph is to the scene. So just, mm -mm, just like label, you don't have to put coordinate. It just comes in a flow. So now run it. You have a button, right? That says exit. Now let's try to work with some properties of this button, for such as I want to give this button a tooltip. Do you know what a tooltip is? When you bring your mouse over something, it gives you a little box, okay? So you have a tooltip object that you can create in FX. So tooltip is not a property anymore. You can actually have a tooltip as an object. So you can create this object and you can keep changing its text and assign it to multiple items. But for now, we are giving it the text of exit button, organize your imports, and then we will assign the tooltip to the button. And this assignment is actually done with the help of a static method called install. So it says tooltip.install, and I want to install the tooltip, which tooltip? tooltip, that's the name of my tooltip object, to the exit button. So that's how you assign a tooltip to a button, by using a static install method of the tooltip class. And now when you run it, now bring your mouse over the exit and leave it for a few, like a second or two and then a tooltip will show up. Okay, now let's learn to apply some CSS. In order for you to apply some CSS to the button, one way to do that is to do what I'm doing here, and then I'm going to improve that. Uh, to call the name of the button dot set style. So set style is a setter that allow you to style the button with using CSS. In the double quotes, I can say I want to apply the FX background color. Now, this background color could be a hexadecimal, could be an RGB, or could be a name. I could use any one of them. So, for example, I say I want the color to be red. Semicolon. You know, just like CSS is, you write a property, colon, value, semicolon. Okay, let's run it. Got it? Okay, so now transitioning is so much easier if you know CSS. The only difference is you have to use hyphen FX. The rest of the properties are all CSS properties. Okay, now let's try to change this to a hexadecimal colors. How are the hexadecimal colors written? With a pound. And the first two are for red, then green, then blue, RGB colors, okay? So we're gonna do, let's say, A, B, A, B, A, D. If I do all three A, B's, it's gonna be a gray color. But this will gonna be a slight variation so let me run it, and you'll see that it is still gray because it has all three very, very close to each other. And they're all A, B, A, B, except for the last one, A, B. Okay. Now, if I want to give more properties, more than one, more than two, so I can create a string outside, and then I can use that string object within to assign all the properties at once. So let's try to do that. Let's 
get rid of this for now. Let's first build a string object called um, CSS props equals to fx background color a b a b a d semicolon and we can use concatenation operator to keep concatenating a long string Then in order for you to change the foreground color, font size, again, you can use the units as we learned in CSS. Concatenation. Font family. And we'll do one last, which is called uh, the radius. And that allows you to curve the corners of the box. So once we have listed all the properties, we can simply assign the CSC, CSS props string to the set style. So here is my list of CSS properties and assign CSS properties to the button. And when I run it, you can get to see the output here. It's a bluish border with curves and there's a white color text and grayish background where I am using font size 18 and font family is courier 